What is up, my fellow members of the CLC? The Disaster Artist. This is a movie I've been looking forward to for a long time. I've actually been looking forward to this more than Star Wars, honestly. And the biggest reason for it is because I am a huge fan of The Room. If you don't know what The Room is, first of all, look it up. But just a basic, uh, simple rundown for you. It is a movie that should not exist. And somehow does. A Doug Walker, a.k.a. the Nostalgia Critic, referred to it as a miracle, and that's such a perfect way to put it. It is, it is not a movie that is so bad that it's good. It is a movie that is so incredibly inept, so terrible, that it's amazing at the same time. And this film is about the making of that film as seen through the eyes of The Room's lead actor, writer, director, producer, Tommy Wiseau, and his best friend and co-star, Greg Sestero. I had really high expectations for this movie. I came in expecting to laugh, and I did. I laughed a fair amount, but probably about half of the laughs that I got came from the fact that I have seen The Room. If you're someone like me who has seen The Room, you are going to find this movie to be an absolute riot. So many good things about this movie, but the one thing that I think everyone is almost in unanimous agreement on is that James Franco's performance as Tommy Wiseau is outstanding. I've definitely heard better impressions of Tommy Wiseau, but I was able to look past that watching the movie because the script elevates Franco's performance and vice versa. This movie explores elements of Tommy Wiseau as a person that I did not think the film would have the balls to explore. They really do a great job of, of opening up this guy and, and humanizing him. And, and a big reason for that is James Franco's performance. He does such an amazing job of, of bringing this character who is a larger-than-life personality and, and making him human. He balances both the comedic elements and the dramatic elements beautifully and gives one of the best performances of his career to me it's it's neck and neck with his performance in 127 hours i thought he was he was incredible but surprisingly i don't know if he gives the best performance in this movie i've never disliked dave franco as an actor uh, to be honest he's never been bad in anything but he's never really had any roles in which he's been able to show off his his dramatic acting chops but in this movie i thought it was easily the best performance I've ever seen him give, and I know a, a ton of credit, and rightfully so, is going to be given to James Franco for his performance in this movie. He's going to get the Oscar nomination, but I, I really think Dave Franco deserves a lot of credit as well. Uh, he grounds this movie. He gives it a heart. He's your protagonist. He's the one you're rooting for the most. He's extremely likable, and, and Dave Franco does an exceptional job. Everyone in this movie is really, really good across the board, but I do want to give uh, praise to two other performers. One is Seth Rogen, who's one of my favorite actors, and he is hysterical in this movie. He plays the script supervisor. He, he represents every person who's ever watched The Room for the first time. He, he was excellent. Not a huge role, but but he he was a standout, as, as he often is. Seth Rogen, really underrated actor. I, everybody loves him for comedy. Guy's got dramatic chops. He's an Oscar-nominated actor. The other guy I want to mention is Paul Shearer, who's a podcaster and a comedic actor. You've probably seen him in stuff before. If you haven't, here he is. And while he doesn't have a huge role either, there's a few scenes in which he has to really butt heads with James Franco's character, and they get into legit shouting matches, and I thought Paul Shearer was great. The last 15 minutes of this movie are so funny, so emotional, so inspirational, so sad, and yet surprisingly uplifting, and it completely works. It fully embraces the hilarity that is the room, while also telling just a really good human story about friendship and two guys that were kind of misfits in Hollywood, or that were misfits in Hollywood, that were just trying to make a movie. I was very, very emotional near the end of this movie, and credit goes to the filmmakers. They they weren't manipulative. They weren't trying to go for the Oscar, trying to make you cry. No, they were just telling a story. And because you you cared about these two characters, because you, you got to see their friendship develop, you feel something at the end. This movie is very, very good. It is an instant classic for me. I am going to watch this movie a lot over the next several years. I'm going to try to see it in theaters again 
if you have time over the holidays, I encourage you, go out and see this movie because it, this is a movie made by people who care. As all great movies are, why am I closing my eyes so much? As all great movies are, never manipulative, always engaging, always interesting, and led by two outstanding lead performances. This is a 10 out of 10 for me. I absolutely love this movie. I, I love it more the more I talk about it. This is this is one of the best movies I've seen in a while. 10 out of 10 for The Disaster Artist. So that's my review. You can follow me on Twitter. That's at Castellani2014. I'm also on Instagram as well. You can find me there. That's ChrisCastle95. But either way, have a very safe and joyful holiday, everyone out there. Thank you for watching. Peace and happiness. Never stop losing.